If you like our content, we'd appreciate it if you would give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and of course, share us to everybody you can think of. We appreciate you guys. Well, hello friends, David, Philippine American couple. I'm coming to you from the heart of Cebu City. So you're gonna be able to experience the scenery and the noise or the sounds of the city. So let's talk a little bit about the process that we went through with being quarantined in the Philippines. So first, make sure you understand that, let me, let me tell you from the start. When you arrive to the International Airport, MAC-10 is where we came in at, we uh, were escorted with the uh, airport employees through the checkpoints and the processes. Now, and that's including getting your first swab. You had to present your passport as your identification for your first swab. And then after that's done and you get through the other, other checkpoints, the airport personnel hand you over to your designated hotel uh, quarantine facility. So they help you load up your stuff, they give you over to the, the, the hotel people. The hotel people then pretty much just drives you to your hotel. They will unload and get you up to your room. And that's what happened for us. Now, a couple of interesting things was, we, were, we felt like we were kind of in the dark. So everything at the airport, we understood. We got told multiple times what's going on. After we got to the hotel, we really didn't have any communication with anybody. They didn't leave us a cheat sheet about, hey, here's what you can do, here's what you can't do, don't do this, don't do that, do this, whatever it is, nothing. Um, nothing about food or anything. So we were really tired, you know, after landing and getting here, so we rested for a while. And then uh, Lorelai, of course, had to call down to the front desk and say, okay we're, we're here in our room and we're quarantined now what you know how do we get you know food now one good thing for us is Lorelai's sister uh, earlier that day dropped off a lot of groceries to our hotel room for us now she could only do this once they wouldn't allow her to come when we were there so she had to do it before we got there so we had food in there but uh, we also kind of wanted to know, well, what are the other options if we need this or that? So they finally sent us a menu of, of a local restaurant, and there was also a choice of a Filipino restaurant. The, the thing about that was, you know, the prices were okay for being in a quarantine facility. I mean, they, they were a little pricey, but not, not horribly bad. The problem was the menus were really small. So maybe they had three sandwiches and three salads, you know, but after you eat one or two, and then you probably don't like the others, eh, not a lot of choice. So my advice is if you can get somebody to bring you food to your room, uh, that's a fantastic way to do it. So that's a little bit about, about the food situation. Now, entertainment wise, well, let me tell you, you're gonna wanna bring your own entertainment because you know we had cable television and there were some Filipino channels and four, uh, four or five English speaking channels that I could understand. But the problem was they just repeated the programming. I must have watched the same National Geographic documentary on drugs 20 or 30 times because there is nothing on. So make sure you bring some books to read. You know, if you got a family, maybe some games, something. Laptops, iPads, I'm telling you, they were the lifesaver for us from an entertainment standpoint. Um, very, very crucial to that. If you do have a large family or multiple people, uh, more than a couple, I would recommend getting two rooms or a large suite. Because one thing to keep in mind is, you know, after a day or two, the hotel rooms really start to shrink. So you're going to want that. I would also highly recommend that you get a balcony. Then at least you can open up and sit outside and get some fresh air and kind of enjoy the, the uh, atmosphere that downtown Cebu, the Philippines brings you. So a little bit about, about that. Let's see, what else? Um, we didn't have any real problems out of the, the staff or anything at the hotel. They were all very courteous. 
you got to make sure you get some pesos so that you can tip everybody so now after about day two we started wondering okay well how does the swap test the exit swap test gonna work because since we hadn't gotten any information about anything we didn't know how that was going to work so we really didn't have a clue how our exit swap test was going to happen uh, what was going on we had no clue because we didn't get a piece of paper explaining it to us we had no knowledge all we knew was at some point on the fourth or fifth day we were supposed to get swabbed other than that we didn't know so Lorelai of course called down to the front desk a couple of times during our time it's like okay how does this work since nobody's told us and um, they told us that well you know somebody's going to call you on the day that the fourth day and have you come down and take your swab and I'm like well okay so on our fourth day we got a little nervous because we were told we were told that the people doing the swab test only work basically you know seven to four o'clock and so about three o'clock Lorelai and I were kind of like well do they work overtime are they just going to go home and we're stuck what does it do so we called back down and and uh talked to somebody and they said well you know there's 50 people that day getting swabbed and the right at that time that they came to get us to get swabbed getting swabbed are pretty simple they actually took us to a different floor uh you get in a queue or in a line uh, and uh, you present your passport they do the swab test and you're good to go so you go back to your room and sit and wait now this is about 3 3 30 in the afternoon they always say that it could take up to 48 hours but by 10 o'clock the next morning the fifth day we had our results and we were out of there by noon so it was a really fast turnover so i'm really really thankful for that and then of course we had to settle up the bill now i'll tell you one thing that we didn't like um however it turned out that we booked this hotel when we previously booked it or when we booked it we booked it for 10 days because that was the number of days for the quarantine at the time. Well, we got screwed out of five days, guys. I paid five extra days that I'm not using in the hotel. Um, or I could have stayed there for five more days, but do you really want to stay, you know? Uh, so that, that was a real bummer. We couldn't get a refund on those five days. So when you make your reservations, somehow, some way, double check that and figure it out. Because however we did it, no. So we lost money. We lost good, serious money. So uh, let's see, what else? All right. They did, um, at one point, finally send us a piece of paper, the hotel did, saying, oh, you know, here's uh, how much money a day, because when we booked it, we also got a food allowance. And so they finally told us, oh, here, here's how much your food allowance was. I think it was 500 pesos. So I'm like, okay, well, we need to use that up or we're just giving that back to the hotel. So we did that. Um, other than that, guys, quarantine was nothing but boring, boring, boring. That's what I can tell you. It was simple, straightforward, boring, boring, boring. Nothing else. I'm going to show you a little video clip of what we saw outside of our window. And that's what I highly recommend. Get a balcony so that you can enjoy the outdoors. But even after five days of looking out at the beautiful city of Cebu, the scenery gets tired. So we were ready to get out of there. But all right, guys, we appreciate you. We appreciate you more than you know. Make sure you like, subscribe, share, and uh, have safe travels. If you have any questions, let us know, and we'll be happy to answer them. Uh, thank you. And we'll see you next time.